Hey there, authors and readers. This is Todd Satterston from Bard Press. And today I want to tell you about three books that you need to check out before the end of 2019. Uh, we're getting to that time of year where we're seeing lots of best of lists. We're seeing lots of uh, gift guides. It's the time of year that we tend to look back over what's happened in these past 12 months and look at the stuff that caught our attention more than maybe we expected. And so what I want to do today is I want to talk about five different sources that you can go to to get good recommendations for business books. I want to talk a little bit about some analysis I did on those lists uh, and what led me to the three books that I'm going to recommend today. So let's start with the sources. I want to give you five. The first one is Porchlight Books. Uh, they're the fine folks who were formerly known as 800 CEO Read, if you're familiar with the industry. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with me, I spent several years there early in my book publishing career. Uh, I'm very good friends with those um, folks still. And their business book program, I think, is in its 13th year this year. Uh, we started it while I was there, and it's probably one of the things I'm still most proud of. Um, I'm glad it's still going on. The formats change slightly over the years. Um, now what they do is they nominate 40 books, uh, and th that's over eight different categories. And so that long list is out now. We'll have a link in the description below, as I will for each one of these sources. Uh, and their process is they go from identifying uh, a set of books in each one of the categories. The next thing they do is they identify winners in each one of the categories. And then from those winners, they nominate what they believe is the best book of the year and they do that in January every year. So uh, Porchlight Books and their Business Book Awards program. Um, the second one I want to mention is probably the one that um, has the most prestige, sort of the most brand recognition, and that's the Financial Times McKinsey Award. Um, it's an award that's been going on um, for quite a while as well. I think it's in its 15th or 16th year and uh, has a slight has a different feel than the porch light books as you'd expect from those two brands it has kind of more of a, a global uh, perspective uh, it's interesting they actually move back and forth each year between london and new and um, new york for the actual awards ceremony itself uh, what they do for their awards program is they first nominate i think it's usually 15 16 17 books uh, they then narrow it down to six books and then what they do is they award, um, they choose one book to be their business book of the year. Um, another thing that adds to some of the prestige there is the winner actually receives a 30,000 um, pound money prize for winning the award. So Financial Times McKinsey business book of the year. Uh, the third one I would mention is I think the one that's been going on the longest. I think it's in its 19th year. And it comes from the folks at uh, Strategy and Business. Uh, if you're not familiar with Strategy and Business, they're a publication that's put out by PwC, a uh, consulting company, uh, and their partners. Their format is interesting in that what they do is they have seven or eight categories, and each year they pull together uh, a different set of experts, journalists, academics, business leaders, who curate each one of those categories. They usually choose three books uh, in each one of the categories, and they choose one book to sort of be their top shelf pick. Uh, and if you visit their website, they kind of have essays about each one of the categories. Uh, again, great list. Also, um, as you'd expect with it coming from kind of a corporate um, consulting firm, a little more corporate, a uh, little more, uh, their selections tend to deal with um, working in bigger businesses, but they also have economics and narratives and marketing, really nice set of categories. So strategy and business in their business book award program. Uh, the fourth one I want to mention is uh, Amazon actually has a set of awards and this is uh, an awards program. They actually um, are constantly looking at books as they come out throughout the year. Uh, they have them for, across a wide category. They have a sort of a leadership and business book category that they look at. And at the end of the year, what they do is they choose 20 books that go, that they sort of nominate to be what they believe they're, they're best in business. Uh, and then they choose one as the top prize. So Amazon, 
Um, I like Amazon a lot because they tend to be uh, as mainstream probably as any of the competitions in terms of uh, recommending books that I think are very mainstream, very practical to a wide set of people. Um, probably also more on the popular side, um, best-selling um, books that got a lot of attention throughout the year. Um, very nice list, love what they do. The last one I wanna mention actually comes from uh, Lee Buchanan, and she is a journalist at Inc. Magazine. She's been, um, gosh, she's been writing for them for years, and she tends to cover business books for them. And at the end of this year, as she's done many years prior, she had a list of books uh, I think it's 11 this year that she recommended for entrepreneurs. So again, another slightly different angle, kind of in this case, just one person, not really the magazine, it's really her, uh, and it having a focus on small business. So you can see each one of these kind of has a little bit different flavor, a little bit different feel to it, um, but all of them I think could be really helpful for giving you recommendations on what it is that you want to read. And given maybe the position you have, the industry that you're in, you may be interested in one of those sort of book lists over another. Um, that's what's great, and that's what I really like about recommending all five. So let me talk about the analysis that I did. The What's interesting about having five different lists like this from I think are really great and somewhat prominent uh, arbiters of I think what are really good business books in the market is that you get very different perspectives and very different personalities almost out of the recommendations that they make. Um, what I'm interested in is what happens when you look across those lists and are there books that show up over and over and over again? And there were some in this case this year. So to give you some sense, the total number of titles that were recommended this year was 87. So there's 87 individual titles that are recommended across those um, five lists. 67 of those titles were only recommended once. So they just showed up either on the porch light list or they showed up on the strategy and business list. Um, and I think those 67 titles rec represent the individual, I guess, personalities and preferences of those individual lists. So that's cool, but that takes out almost 80% of the titles. Um, What's interesting is there's 15 titles that showed up on two lists, so 15 titles. And most of those titles um, share a common link that one of the pairs of the two lists they were on was Porchlight. And I think that just comes from the fact that, you know, with them nominating so many books, in their case, like I said, 40 different books, um, that it just creates a lot more connection points for those other lists to connect into. When you look at the other four lists, um, they kind of evenly matched up to those 15 books that were seen on more than one list, or actually that were seen on two lists. Um, again, it, it felt to me like um, there wasn't anything particularly interesting in those 15 titles. Again, I think you roughly saw um, interest or crossover interest between lists. What's super interesting to me is there were no books that showed up on three of the lists, and there were zero books, no books, that showed up on all five. So what that leaves us is it leaves us three titles that showed up on four lists. Uh, and I think that's pretty interesting. I think it's interesting that um, when you look at those, four, those three books and you look at the list that they showed up on, there wasn't any uh, common combination. Each one of them had different people kind of voting for each one of those titles. So I think that there's both the fact that they show up on four different lists and the fact that there wasn't any common way that those lists came to a consensus on these three books. Um, I think it makes it a, a good starting point for us to think about books that we should really pay attention to in 2019. So let me talk about each one of the books quickly, just kind of name them, and then maybe give you a few more ideas on uh, why these are worth paying attention to. So quickly, the first book is uh, Range, Why Journalists Triumph in a Specialized World 
by David Epstein. The second book is uh, Nine Lies About Work, uh, A Freethinking Leader's Guide to the Real World. And the final book is called uh, Loon Shots, How to Nurture the Crazy Ideas that Win Wars, Cure Diseases, and Transform Industries. Um, the author's name is Safi Bacall. So I think first what's interesting is that each one of these books represents a part of our life that I think we always need to be investing in. So in the case of Range, it's a great book for um, looking at sort of just our own personal development. What are we doing for ourselves as an individual? Uh, the book has a really interesting thesis around how being a generalist is a uh, better career path and um, maybe a better life path than um, focusing on a very particular space over time. Uh, so personal development. What's interesting about um, Nine Lies About Work is we should always be investing in ways to um, get better at how we interact with others. Um, and in this case, um, the book's largely written for managers and you know, how do we get feedback? How do we interact with, how do we manage teams? How do we interact with our employees? Um, that's the, the focus of the book, but um, there's, having read it, there's no reason why we can't take those same lessons to um, outside of business work that we do, work, you know, the, the interactions that we have with our family. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff to take away from that. So that how do we interact with others pieces also something I think we always need to be investing in. I think um, the book from Marcus and Ashley is really good for that. The third book, uh, I think we always need to be figuring out how can we be innovative? How can we introduce new ideas in whatever kind of work that is that we're doing? Um, change is constant. Um, I think we all kind of admit to ourselves now that uh, change is constant, it seems to be accelerating, and we need to be looking at ways that we can be more successful uh, at bringing new ideas into the marketplace and improving the work that we're doing. And I think Loon Shots is just another great book um, for how it is that we can take a perspective. And it's a pretty different one. He's got a pretty radical view on it. He, he looks to science and the science of phase transitions as a way for us and almost a metaphor for how ideas get introduced into the marketplace and what we, can we do and what do we need to pay attention to as we think about bringing new ideas uh, into the world. So um, those are the three books. Um, I'm familiar with all of them. Uh, I'm actually going to have decided I'm going to go back and do reviews on each one of them to um, spend some time with each one. And so sort of my challenge to all of you is I think you could probably read all three of these books by the end of the year. I'm you know, publishing this review just before Thanksgiving. Uh, you've got six weeks to do it. Um, I would strongly encourage you to pick up all of these books and, and check them out. And uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description to uh, a written essay that I have about this that has a little bit more detail um, that you could share with others. And expect to see a little bit more about me talking about each one of these books uh, in the future. Thanks.